bit worried so I'm packing up getting as much gear packed away as, as I can just in case it does collapse and I need to get out and sort it all out and just get the hell off the hill this is a bit scary in fact it's very scary hello and welcome back can you guess where I am? let me spin you around that's right, I'm in Langdale So the plan for today is, well there is no plan really The plans got completely scuppered by the changing weather forecast So the original plan was to head over and be on the Grasmere side of this ridge that I'm going up now and looking out towards the east but yeah, just last minute weather completely changed and the wind's coming in from a totally different direction As they say, if you want to make God laugh tell me plans But that's okay, I'm just going to go planless I'm going up towards Stickletown and I'm going to head over towards Blee Rig somewhere not necessarily on Blee Rig itself just somewhere up here I've got no idea <laughs> I'm just going to find somewhere to pitch up and hopefully get some really beautiful views of the Langdale Pikes before the snow comes in because it is forecast to put down a whole load more snow around about four or five o'clock so without further ado and without further waffleage let's get up there Okay, Stickle Tan. And that there is Harrison Stickle and the mighty Paviarch. Just and so make out a little bit of Jack's rake there, maybe, on this, I don't know. So the idea is I'm gonna keep on going round here past the tan and heading up towards that way somewhere. Like I said, there's no plan. I'm just I'm just winging it. And it's quite nice, it's quite nice to wing it and not really have any set expectations or anything like that, really good it feels like I could be in Scandinavia right now it certainly doesn't feel like I'm in England, that's for sure as I suspected there are a couple of wild campers already set up here at the tarn and yeah, it's a popular spot here to, to camp because there is actually a really good flat area there but that's not for me I want to camp as far away from humanity as possible <laughs> Right, so Just past the snowman <laughs> Should be able to see where I'm going I'm just going to head off basically Up there into the The Never Never And hopefully find something that's got a relatively good view looking back towards the pikes here Okay, this is probably the, the most complicated part of while camping is trying to find somewhere that's flat enough and also out of the wind enough and I know, and it already has started as well by the way the wind has switched from the southwesterly to a southeasterly, in fact east southeasterly and it's biting as well, wow, really cold so I definitely don't want to be here although it looks really nice, it's nice and flat and it's perfect really, there's a nice little shelter here as well so I think what I'm going to do is drop down into this little bit here this is about as flat as I can find it and as out of the wind as I can find it in this area without, you know, just trips in miles and check out the view, you know, the views are very important I want to be sure to have that view you may or may not have noticed that there's a lot of angry weather moving in so I need to get the tent up right now and get everything stored away nice and dry and then I can just relax and well I can do whatever it wants then I think it's going to fall as snow here okay let's go
it's beer time. Okay, welcome to Camp Crag. The temperature has dropped massively just while I've been here and the wind's picking up as well. But yeah, not a bad spot there, a little bit of shelter because of this lump here. Like I said, the wind's coming in from that direction. But look at this for a view. Isn't that marvellous? So Stickle Tarn, Harrison Stickle, Pavey Ark, very, very clearly see Jack's rate going up there. Got Sergeant Man here. And over to the side, well, I can see it all. You know, I can see Helvellyn over there, Seat Sandal, I can see St. Sunday Crag, Fairfield, all the Fairfield Horseshoe, Windermere down there. We've got Lingmoor over here, Side Pike, Weatherlam, the old man, Swill House, great cars. This might be a leaking. Pike of Blisco and so on. Whew, that wind is icy. You know, I was expecting all that snow to come in, although as I say those very words, you won't be able to see it on this camera, but it is definitely hitting. Um, let's have a look. That'll be great cars. Yeah. Eek. A little bit perturbed by this wind because it seems to have changed directions again, but it'll be fine. Right, I'm going to crack a beer open. Steve Wallace, step two. <sighs> Once again, I've got four beers. Look, nah, I'll definitely want them this time. And sure enough, as soon as I get here, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Cheers. Sante. Salut. Dostrovia. What else? Chin chin. I'll do. Oh, that's a nice one. Hazy Jane. Yeah, I quite like that. That's a little bit more fruity than the uh, the punk IPA. I like the fruity ones. Fruity. So I'm taking a little bit of a gamble tonight because, as you can see, this is winter conditions and I don't have winter gear. Tent's fine, that's not a problem. However, the sleeping bag, my, in fact my whole sleeping system, sleeping bag and a sleeping pad, a three season. The bag is good. Look at the state of that tent. <laughs> Look at the way I've pitched it. It's because there's a big gap underneath. Anyway, yeah, the sleeping bag is good down to minus one. That's the comfort rating. And if it drops down to minus three tonight, like it's forecast to, yeah, it could be, it could be a challenge. That's why I've brought the, um, the closed cell pad as well just to stick underneath the, the inflatable to give it a little bit more thermal value I think that's got an R rating of 1.5 and the, the pad's got three so <sighs> hopefully it'll be all right so I'll make the most of it being sort of dry and not snowing and do a little bit of a scout around let's go and see what we can find so I brought my camera yeah I mean <laughs> it's forecast to do exactly this just overcast snow and rain coming in but you know these forecasters they cannot forecast or predict those fleeting moments where you literally get 10 minutes of this glorious light coming in at sunset or what have you that happens so many times at sunrise and sunset on days where they've, they've said yeah it's just it's gonna be completely overcast all day so it's worth having the camera and you know, it's, it's worth being here to try and capture those moments yeah, if I'm not here, I'm not going to get those shots, am I? Let's have a look down here. Oh, look at this. Oh, so this is Blee Rig. And we've got Cordale Tarn down there. Easdale Tarn down that way. See Helm Crag. And obviously out towards Grasmere there as well. Beautiful. I've actually done a camp round here before. I'm trying to think where it was, actually. It must have been round here. Maybe a bit further on. Overlooking Easdale. It's fantastic. And a little factoid for you. Blee means blue, so Blee Tarn, Blee Rig, Blee Water over by High Street means blue, that's Old Norse for blue. Is it Old Norse or Old English? I need to double check that one. And then uh, Rig is, well, it means ridge basically. So this is the Blue Ridge. Doesn't look very blue, but it feels very, very blue. Okay, the snow has arrived. <laughs> Here it comes, along with some really strong wind now. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, it's definitely picking up. Weather is going a little bit nasty. But hopefully, I mean, you can see there, well, you can't see it. The tent's out of view, out of sight, and hopefully out of the wind as well. So yeah, good. It's cute, this little shelter, isn't it? <laughs> now, if it had been a fine evening, it would have been lovely to, you know, set the tent up here perhaps, and just have a huge fire going. <laughs> Never have a fire here ever but look at that out there look at it towards side pike so blee tan is just on the other side of that and that'll be getting absolutely hammered now by that snow 
in fact, you know, Windermere has disappeared. <sighs> lovely. I mean, it's lovely now. Three o'clock in the morning, it might not be so lovely. Okay, it's just coming up to six o'clock. I'm on number three, by the way. Just trying to get rid of it, so I don't have to carry it back down with me tomorrow. But yeah, just coming up to six, and as you can see, it's definitely getting dark now. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. A minute ago, I wandered down Blee Rig just to try and find that spot where I camped last time, and I got about halfway there and I thought, you know what, I should go back and get the camera and bring you guys with me and show you. So that's what I've done. I just hope I don't get lost because it is getting dark quite quickly. I've got my torch though, so it'll be, it'll be right. And through the bog we go. Ooh. That's one of the things I love about wild camping though, you know. You know, once you've pitched your tent, you just, you're just free to roam and have a wander around and see what you can see. And just be in this wild place by yourself. It's fantastic. I did it on that last one, you know, up on Black Sails. And uh, it's lovely. Everybody's gone home. There's no one here. Well, I hope there's not. But yeah, it's it's lovely having a place to yourself. Oh, look at it. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let me get onto the edge here so you can see what I'm seeing. There we go. Cordale, Eastdale. I bet you any money there'd be people down there camping right now. Eastdale Town. I mean, if I had decent eyes, I'd be able to see them. But it is very windy tonight. It's definitely picked up. And the temperature, like I mentioned before, is dropping significantly. So I'll do this, I'll go and show you. I'll just, I don't even know why I'm bothering to be honest. I mean, you're not interested. <laughs> Here's where I camped once. Kind of reminds me of that scene out of uh, Monty Python, Meaning of Life, with a little French dude kind of like, come, come here. This is where I was born, or whatever it was, I don't know what it was. Looking lovely. Looking grim but lovely. And I think Grim can be lovely. Remember, bleak is beautiful. Loving that. Right, I've dropped down here. I am starting to wonder if I actually know where this place is. Kind of going further and further along this ridge. Okay, I officially give up because <laughs> I can't find it. I cannot find that spot whatsoever. I keep going all the way along the ridge from one lump to another thinking ah this must be it this must be it and then it's not it and i could just keep going for well for miles i mean it's not that important it's, it's really not not that not that interesting at all but you know it was a nice place to camp i mean just grab me camp don't want to leave any litter around here but cordial tarn is there so we're kind of not that far off that same elevation now i've dropped down quite a bit from where the tent is up there in the clag somewhere and we've got easedale down there as well and it was this kind of angle, so it's round here somewhere, maybe over there, but like I said, I could just keep on walking into oblivion. And it's getting dark, as you can see, so I don't want to leave it too late before heading back towards the tent. I do hope you can see it, and not just a big blue thing. It's so amazing to be in these kind of environments, in these conditions, by yourself. Again, it's another cliche when people say it makes you feel alive being in places like this when it's a little bit, you know, it is a bit sketchy. You're on your own, it's very cold, it's gonna be dark soon, quite far away from any sort of rescue. There's, there's absolutely no mobile phone signal whatsoever. And it does make you feel alive. It's wonderful. Let's get back to the tent, uh, which is way over, I mean, you can't, it's, I think it's actually, I think the clouds have come down, I think I'm in clag now. So let's get back up there and get the stove on. Get some scranage going. Oh, chicken tikka. I hope it's chicken tikka. <laughs> oh, it really has clagged in. Uh, the tent's up there somewhere. Okay, I managed to relocate the tent here. Well, that's interesting. So, got a little bit of snow on this side of the tent. I'm gonna get in and, like I said, get the stove on and get some food on. Oh, let's go. Oh, it's getting cosy. Okay, minor problem. 
in that the wind is actually still coming this way. It's just blowing in all this weird snow and rain, which is going to be a bit problematic for cooking. Although, if I'm quick, I've got a little bit of a vent here. I might be all right with it, so... Grass! Seriously! Cheers! <laughs> Oh, no, my gas canisters. It doesn't work when it gets too cold, that's the trouble. Oh, it's not going to do it. It's too cold. Gas kind of too cold. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the canister in my um, in my jacket for a bit. Give it five minutes. Just talk amongst yourselves. Let's get it inside here. Get it warmed up. All right, let's try that again. How we get on this time. Whoa, wow. Actually smell. <laughs> Singed hair. <laughs> I could have singed the hair on my hand. Okay, that's much better. That's going really good. I'll just stick it in my jacket there, just warm up a little bit. Seems to have done the job. I'm a sport by the way. Crucial bit of kit. Oh yeah, let's have a look. This is um, the chicken korma with rice. I thought it was chicken tikka. Okay, we're on. Chicken korma. Let's see. There's so much uh, condensation here tonight. Hey, it smells good. It smells like chicken korma. You know, it's just a little things in life, isn't it? Ventilation. Get out. <laughs> but you can't even see anything anymore. Yeah, once again, into the sleeping bag. I oh, don't no, can't find a dry bag. It's just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to risk it. Right. Let's make this hot chocky without grass this time. Okay, this boards well because been sat here all this time on my sleeping pad and the closed cell pad. I've not got a cold bomb, so fingers crossed it will keep me um, protected from the ground tonight. Looking forward to all of this. I've still got a beer on the go. <laughs> beer, hot chockey. I think what I'll do in a minute, once I've eaten, is I'm going to boil up um, probably, have a think about this, probably, yeah, the rest of that water. Pour it back into here and then shove it into my bag. Let's stay out this bit of fly sheet. Incidentally, I've got a new um, Nalgene bottle. This is actually my toilet. <laughs> so I'll be weeing in that tonight. It's glow in the dark as well, which is really handy. So I can see where I'm, you know, I'm going. If I ever offer you a drink out of this bottle, yeah, there's probably a good chance that I don't like you. <laughs> yeah. So much moisture in this tent now. It's crazy. It's my hot water bottle. Stick that. <laughs> I don't know if you can see anything. <laughs> Let's open that a little bit more. Oh, it's so wet in here. Right. That's going into my sleeping bag. Food's coming out. That's going to go down about midway. Oh, and the clothes are actually, got them in there as well. Warm those up. Mm. <laughs> this is like congealed vomit as well. Take it out. Good reckon. It is the little things in life, isn't it? Okay. I think this is my new fave. That is really good. And it's got a little bit of spice to it, which commas don't have. Yeah, those flavours are really good. Wow. <laughs> I can really feel the temperature dropping now on my legs and my feet. Right, it is 7.25. Nothing doing now, so I think I might as well just get into bed and uh, start getting some heat going. So, uh, let's go to bed. It is super cozy in here. I bet even you were thinking 
wow, it looks super cozy in there. Teeth are brushed, and I think I'm gonna hit the hay because I'm absolutely crane crackered. So I shall see you in the morning. Hopefully I haven't frozen to death. I don't think that's gonna happen, but uh, fingers crossed. See you in the morning. All right, it is around about one o'clock in the morning. And as you can see, there's a lot of solid snow on the outside of the tent. I just sat on it, but check this out. Have a look outside. It's a complete white out <laughs> oh dear now ordinarily that wouldn't be a problem at all but I've not brought my spikes I left them in the van I thought ah it'll be fine eek so it's all just started back up again it's been so still for about an hour an hour and a half not a breath of wind I actually thought I died <laughs> it was so surreal and weird um, but it has started now, and I can't tell if that's rain or whether it's snow or sleet. Right, I'll see you in the morning. Well, the wind is back with a vengeance. It is just... Yeah, it's getting a bit crazy, actually. Just every now and then it feels like the tent is just going to lift off and go. Oh, it's all fun and games, isn't it? Feeling alive. I hope it stays that way. Right, this has turned into a really serious situation. The wind is coming straight down this way and it is pretty much flattening the tent. It's fairly strong wind now. I'm a little bit worried, so I'm packing up, getting as much gear packed away as, as I can. Uh, just in case it does collapse and I need to get out and sort it all out and just get the hell off the hill. Yeah, this is not what I was expecting. Here we are. I must admit, this is a bit scary. In fact, it's very scary. I'm going to hold this pole every time I get these really big gusts because it just comes right down. All right, I'll keep you posted. I'm literally having to sit here and hold the tent up. This is pretty crazy. It just keeps coming right down. I don't know how much it can take. It can probably take a hell of a beating, but I don't know how much. I mean, it's trying to lift off the ground. Trying to push it in and lift it up. And it's only half three. I've got hours of this yet. I think it might even be longer. I'll catch up with you later on. Morning everybody. Wow. It's 20 past seven and somehow, I don't know how, but I managed to take the tent down <laughs> in this wind. It's absolutely crazy, crazy wind. 
way more than was forecast. Honestly, it's been a bit of an emergency this morning, just packing everything away and getting the hell out of here because this wind isn't going to stop and there's more rain and snow coming in. So I want to get off before that happens and, well, clag as well. So yeah, so I didn't film the, me dismounting the tent. I haven't had a brew. I, I spent about three hours just trying to hold the tent up. I'm not kidding you. This whole filming business was the last thing on my mind. It kind of turned into a bit of an emergency, really. But look what I noticed this morning here. Huge puddles. This is where the tent was. So the tent was on top of here, look. Look at that. There's an actual lake there. So I'm going to make my way down now. <laughs> After last night's fiasco. I don't know if you can hear me. You probably can. I'll do a voiceover if I can. Anyway. <laughs> There's pikes. Uh, if you'd head down that way, you end up going down to um, Easdale Town. we are really sheltered down there, actually. I can't even feel my feet now. They're completely numb. It's morning all the time. Morning. Right. Let's get down there. Let's get down to Stickle Town and uh, assess the situation there. You might be hearing me a bit better down there. If not, then, well, who cares? <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it's so windy. Oh, what am I stepping onto? It's a really impressive sight, isn't it? Wow. I mean, it probably looks absolutely pathetic and tiny in this camera, but when you're here, this landscape, it's just immense. It's so huge. Yeah, it's quite hard to walk on this stuff because as the snow melts, it's going really slushy and it just shells off the side of the hill, taking you along with it. <laughs> so it's very, very slippy down here. Oh, it's definitely a lot more sheltered around this side, down low. <laughs> Last night was probably one of the hardest nights of my life. And I don't say that lightly because I've had some pretty nightmare times, but that was tough. And I, th I was thinking throughout the night, it's only a matter of time before the tent goes. It's not a case of if it goes, just when. It's just a matter of time before the wind either crushed it completely and then smashed it to pieces or got underneath it and then turned it into a huge kite <laughs> with me in it as well. But fortunately, you know, it held up. Yeah, quite impressed actually. Quite impressed by the, uh, the battering it took. But I don't think I'll be coming out on a windy day again, a windy night. I just, you know, I think I've said it before when I've been out vlogging, I don't like wind, I hate it. I can cope with rain, I can cope with snow, I can cope with the cold, but wind, it's so unpredictable and it can just ruin everything. So from now on, I'll only be going out if it's up to five miles per hour. <laughs> Nothing more. Hey, I tell you what though, I'm getting rewarded. It's a bit of sunlight. That's the first sunlight I've seen in, well, it seems like a flipping lifetime. Ooh, it's looking very dark down there. Dark and brooding towards Side Pike. Look at that. Bit of sunlight. That's nice. I don't think it's going to last though. I think it's going to get pretty grim later on. It's supposed to be drizzle later on. Drizzle. Okay, time for a nice gingerly walk back down here. Honestly, look at this. Wow. Love that light and pave yak. So that's where I was last night. Way up there. Doesn't look far, doesn't look high, but yeah, it is quite high and quite far and quite windy. <laughs> oh, hello. Have you been out camping? Have you been out camping? Have you? Where have you been? I like your jumper. Leap of faith. <laughs> yeah, I feel somewhat bereft this morning. You know, I haven't had the full experience. I haven't had the brew in the tent. And it was, well, I didn't even have a sleep, you know. <laughs> and I've got absolutely no idea if this video is any good. Uh, interesting anyway. You know, I didn't get any photographs. Talk about buckling under pressure. <laughs> but like I said, it was, without a shadow of a doubt, 
one of, if not the hardest night I've ever had, ever. And I'm not being dramatic now. I kind of felt some a couple of times, am I going to make it off this hill? You know, you have this real feeling of vulnerability when you're out in that situation. Just a little bit of nylon protecting you from the elements. You cast your mind back maybe a few hours before I went to bed. I said, uh, oh, it makes you feel alive being in places like this. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> later on, I didn't know how long I was going to be alive for. So yeah, it really did make me feel very much alive. Okay, I'm going to get down to the van. And at that point, I'm going to decide where to go for some brekkie. Because you know what? I think I've flipped and earned it. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Out towards Windermere. Oh, beautiful. Am I a bit like a stuck record? <laughs> Hey, Hurdy. Come on, you go. Come. Thank you very much. 